unmute just so we don't hear the background noise from your house. Um, be sure you've typed tie in the chat box just so I know who all's here when I check my list in a little bit. And welcome to Miss Walker's afternoon story time. We are reading another couple chapters from How to Train Your Dragon. We started this series. Um, how many of you guys have noticed some differences between this and the movie How to Train Your Dragon? Give me a thumbs up if you've noticed a difference in this storyline and the storyline from the movie, if you've seen the cartoon. All right, Evan, hop on and tell me one difference you've noticed so far. Oh, come on, Evan, don't be shy. Okay, Haven, what's one difference you've noticed? <laughs> she says, I'm not talking either. <laughs> All right, we'll just jump into the story. How about that? All right, I'm going to change my screen so that you guys can see the um, words again. All right, so we're on chapter, chapter 10, Training Your Dragon the Hard Way. Hiccup was still pretty certain, knowing dragons as he did, that yelling was the easiest method to training them. So, over the next couple of weeks, he tried yelling at Toothless to see if he could make it work. He tried yelling loudly and firmly and strictly. He looked as cross as he could, but Toothless didn't take him seriously. Hiccup finally gave up yelling at Toothless when he stole a skipper off his plate one morning at breakfast. Hiccup let out the most fierce and frightening yell, and Toothless gave him a wicked look and knocked everything else to the floor in one swipe with his tail. That was it with yelling, as far as Hiccup was concerned. Okay, then, said Hiccup. I'm going to try it the other extreme. So he was nice to Toothless as he possibly could, but he gave Toothless the comfiest bit of bed and lay dangerously balanced on the edge himself. He fed him as much kipper and lobster as he wanted. He only did this once, though, as a little dragon kept eating until he made himself thoroughly sick. He played games with him for hours and hours. He told him jokes, brought him mice to eat. He scratched the bit of Toothless that could, he couldn't quite reach in between his spokes. He made the dragon's life as close to dragon heaven as he possibly could. By mid-February, the winter was coming to an end on Burke. The snowy season had turned into the raising season, which was the kind of weather where your clothes never got dry no matter what. Hiccup would hang up his sodden tunic on a chair in front of the fire before going to bed at night, and in the morning it would still be wet. Warm and wet rather than cold and wet, but wet nevertheless. The ground all around the village turned into knee-deep mud. What in Wooden's name are you doing? asked Fishleg when he came across Hiccup, digging a large hole outside the house. Building a mud wallow for Toothless, he panted. You spoil the dragon. You really do, said Fishleg, shaking his head. It's psychology, you see. It's clever and it's subtle, not like the caveman yelling you're doing with Horrocrow. Fishlegs had named his dragon Horrocrow. The horror bit was to make the poor creature at least sound a bit frightening. And the cow bit was because for a dragon, she really was remarkably like a cow. She was a large, peaceful, brown creature, easygoing nat nature. Fishlegs suspected she might be a vegetarian. She's always catching her nibbling, catch her nibbling at the woodwork, he complained. Blood, horror crow, cow, blood, that's what you should want. Nevertheless, Fixlings was a better yeller than Hiccup. Or maybe Horror Cow was just lazier and more obliging character than Toothless. But Horror Cow was proving more easy to train by the yelling method. Okay, Toothless, it's ready, said Hiccup. Get yourself a good wallow. Toothless stopped trying to catch vowels and leapt into the mud. He rolled all over the oozy muck, spreading his wings and squirting, squirming happily. I'm bonding with him, said Hiccup, so he'll do what I say. Hiccup, said Fishlegs, as Toothless sucked a good mouthful of mud and spat it right out into Hiccup's face. I may not know much about dragons, but I do know they are the most selfish creatures on earth. No dragon is ever going to want 
ever going to do what you want out of gratitude? Dragons don't know what gratitude is. Give up. This will never work. The thing about us dragons, Toothless said helpfully, is we're sur survivors. We're not like the sa sappy cats or the dumb dogs falling in love with their masters and yucky things like that. The only reason we ever do what Mad wants is because he's bigger than us and gives us food. What's he saying? Asked Fishlegs. Pretty much what you're saying, said Hiccup. Never trust a dragon, said Hoothless, Toothless cheerfully, hopping out of the wallow and helping himself to one of the winkles that Hiccup had found for him. Toothless was particularly fond of winkles. J just like picking your nose, he said. That's my m mother taught me in the nest. And she, no. Hiccup sighed. It was true. Toothless was cute to look at and good company if a little demanding. However, you only had to look into his big, innocent, heavy-lashed eyes to realize he was totally without morals. The eyes were ancient, the eyes of killer. You might as well ask a crocodile or a shark to be your friend. Hiccup wide, wiped the mud off his face. I'll think of something else, said Hiccup. February turned into March and Hiccup was still thinking. A few flowers had made the mistake of appearing and were immediately blasted out of existence by a couple of hard frosts that kept themselves back for this very purpose. Fish legs could now get Hick Horokow to go and stay on command. Hiccup was still struggling to teach Toothless the basics of toilet training. No pooling in the kitchen, he said Hiccup the hundredth time, carrying Toothless outside after yet another accident. It's warmer in the kitchen, whined Toothless. But poos go outside, you know that, said Hiccup at the end of the tether. Toothless promptly pooed all over Hiccup's hand and down his tunic. It's outside, is outside, is outside, crow Toothless. At this inconvenient moment, Snoutlight and Dogsworth came sauntering past Storkuk's house on the way back from the beach, their dragons on their shoulders. Well, well, said Snoutlight, if this isn't useless, covered in dragon poo, it might actually, it actually quite suits you. Her, 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 snorted Dog's Breath. That's not a dragon, sneered Snuglug's dragon, Breath's dragon, who was ugly, great, gonkrel with a pug nose and a t mean temper. That's Newt's with wings. That's not a dragon, said Cough Fireworm, Snoutlout's dragon, who was as big a bully as her master. That's an ickle newborn baby wabbit with pathetic poo problem. Toothless gave a gasp in fury. Snoutlight showed Hiccup the immense leap of heap of fish he wrapped up in his cloak. Look at what Fireworm and Sneeslug caught down at the beach. It only took a couple hours. Fireworks coughed and flexed a shiny muscle or two and looked at her claws in fake modesty. Oh, please, she drawled. It wasn't even concentrating. If I was trying, I could it, do it in 10 minutes with one wing tied behind my back. Excuse me while I throw up, muttered Toothless to Harrowcrow, who was regarding Fireworm with disapproval in her big brown eyes. So there's Fireworm and Sea Slug. We reckon Fireworm could be a bit of a hunting legend, said Snoutlight. I hear Harrowcrow is partial to carrots. Has Toothless Wonder gotten the nerve to attack a vegetable? A bit crunchy, but perhaps he could manage the odd squished cucumber. You could give it to him through a straw, perhaps. Her, her, her. Dog's Breath laughed so hard that snot came snorting out of his nose. Careful, Dog's Breath, said Fishlegs politely. Your brains are coming out. Dog's Breath bashed him hard, and the two boys staggered off. Fireworm was making a lunge at Toothless that nearly took his eye out as he went past. But as soon as they were safely out of earshot, Toothless jumped out of Hiccup's arm and coughed out sheets of flame in a menacing manner. Bullies, yellow bellies, come close and the toothless will fry you for a frazzle. Toothless, drag out your guts and play with them sharp. Toothless will, toothless will, well, you just better not come any closer, that's all. Oh, brave toothless, said Hiccup sarcastically. If you shout louder, they might even hear you. Chapter 9. Fear, Vanity, Revenge, and Silly Jokes. March 
turned into April and April turned into May. After a fireworms remark about the pathetic, pathetic bunny rabbit, Toothless never pooed in the kitchen again. But Hiccup hadn't made any further progress training him. It was still raining and a bit warm. The wind was blowing, but a little less fearsome wind. And it was possible to stand upright. The gulls' eggs were hatching onto rocks, and the parent gulls would dive on Hiccup and fish legs when they came to the long beach to practice. Kill, Harokau, kill, said fish legs to Harokau, who calmly perched on his shoulder. You could have a black back, excuse me, you could have a black backed gull for breakfast, he said. She's barely half your size. Honestly, Hiccup, I give up. I don't know what I'm going to do to pass the hunting section of the test. Harokau isn't, doesn't have a killer instinct. She'll never survive in the wild. Hiccup laughed hollowly. You think you've got problems? Toothless and I are failing right from the beginning. Basic obedience command, retrieval, compulsory exercises of hunting, the lot. Oh, it can't be that bad, said Fishlegs. Watch, said Hiccup. The boys moved along the beach a bit, out of range of the gulls. They started practicing the most basic command of all. Go. The dragon was supposed to stand and bolt upright on the handler's outstretched hand, and the handler would then bark a, a command loudly as possible, simultaneously lifting his arm to fling the dragon into the air. The dragon was supposed to soar gracefully into flight when the handler's hand reached the highest point. Harcrow yawned, scratched, and slowly flapped off, grumbling to herself. Toothless was even less obedient. Go, yelled Hiccup. Hiccup flung his arm up. Toothless hung on. I said go, said Hiccup, repeatedly in frustration. Why go, shuddered Toothless, gripping even tighter. Just go, 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 screamed Hiccup, flapping his arm up and down frantically with Toothless hanging on for dear life. Toothless stayed. Toothless said Hiccup. Oh, as reasonably as he could, please go. If you don't start going when I tell you, we're both going to get thrown into exile. But I don't want to go, said Toothless, pointing out equally reasonably. Fishleg watched the whole process, appalled in amazement. You really do have problems, he said in an odd voice. Yep, said Hiccup. He managed to uncurl Toothless's claws, which had relaxed their grip for a second, and pushed him off. Toothless landed on the sound with a squeak of outrage and immediately attached himself to Hiccup's legs, getting a good grip on the sandals with his talons, wrapping his wings around Hiccup's calf. Not going, Toothless said stubbornly. It can't get much worse than this, said Hiccup. I'm going to try a new trick. He took out a notebook in which he'd been jotting down all he knew about dragons in hopes to find something useful. Dragon motivation. Hiccup's number read aloud. Number one, gratitude. Number two, fear. That works if you can't do it. Number three, four, and five, greed, vanity, and revenge. Those are worth a try. Six, jokes and rattle, riddling talk, only if I'm desperate. This has got to be a first, said Fish Legs. Drawed, but... I'm with Gobber and Belch on this one. Why don't you yell a bit louder? Toothless ignored, Hiccup ignored him. Okay, Toothless, said Hiccup to the little dragon who was pretending to be asleep as he held on to Hiccup's leg. For every fish you catch me, I will give you two more lobsters when you get home. Toothless opened his eyes. Alive, he said eagerly. Can Toothless kill him, please, just this once? No, Toothless, Hiccup said firmly. I keep telling you it isn't kind to torture creatures smaller than yourself. Toothless closed his eyes. You're so boring. You're such a clever, quick dragon, Toothless. I bet you could catch more fish than the others on Thor Thursday if you wanted to. Toothless opened his eyes to consider the matter. Twice as many, he said modestly, but I don't want to. This was unanswerable, and Hiccup crossed the vanity off his list. <coughs> Here's a, <coughs> some information about another dragon. You know that big red fireworm who was so rude to you, said Hiccup, toothless back to the ground in indignation. I said he said I was a newt with wings, said I was incontinent bunny ra rabbit, toothless going to kill her, toothless going to scratch her to death, toothless going to, yes, yes. That fireworm dragon and her master, who looks like a pig, think fireworm is going to catch him more fish than anybody else on Thor Thursday celebrations. Think how stupid they are going to look if you win the prize for the most promising dragon instead of her. 
Toothless got off Hiccup's leg. I will think about that, said Toothless, and he waddled off a couple of feet and thought about it. Five minutes later, he was still thinking. He let out an odd chuckle now and then, but every time Hiccup said, so now, how about it then? He just replied, still thinking, go away. With a sigh, Hiccup put a line through revenge. Okay, said Fishlegs, looking over at Hiccup's shoulder. You've tried everything else. How about jokes and riddling talk? I assume you're desperate. Toothless, if you catch me a nice big mackerel roll, you'll be the cleverest, fastest dragon on Burke, and you'll make Fireworm Dragon look like an idiot, and you'll have all the lobsters you can eat when you get home, and I will tell you a really good joke. Toothless turned around. Toothless loves jokes. He flacked on hiccups all. All right, Toothless help you, but not because me being nice or anything yucky. Oh, no, of course not. Us dragons are cruel and mean, but we do love a joke to tell. Tell me now. No way. After you bring me the mackerel, said Okay, then, said Toothless. He jumped off Hiccup's arm into the air. Dragon hunting was a very impressive sight. Even with a scrawny infant like Toothless, he threw across the beach in his usual untidy, lopsided fashion, shrinking a few insults along the way to any camaraderance that might be smaller than him. But as soon as he reached the sea, Toothless seemed to grow a bit. The sea salt awoke him in an aster ancestral memory of a great pedigree of hunting mar monsters that were his forefathers. He spread his wings out like a kite and flew fairly swiftly over the surface of the choppy ways, keeping his bodies and wings steady as he searched for the fish movement. He spotted something and soared around in circles until he was so high that Hiccup was craning his neck backwards on the beach and could only see him as a tiny speck. The speck was mo motionless for a second, and then Toothless dived, his wings folded by his sides, dropping like a stone out of the sky. He disappeared into the water and was gone for a while. Dragons can stay underwater for at least five minutes if they want to. Toothless got quite distracted under there, chasing one fish and then another, and able to decide which was the biggest. Hiccup had gotten bored looking for lobsters when Toothless came bursting triumphantly out of the sea carrying a small mackerel. He dropped the mackerel at Hiccup's feet and did three simple salts in a row and landed on Hiccup's head. Then he let out a da dragon's cry of triumph, which was a bit like a monster, crowing a lot louder and more self-satisfied. Then he leaved over and stared in Hiccup's eyes upside down. Now tell me a joke, said Toothless. Whimpering Wodens, he did it. He really did it. Tell me a joke, Toothless said again. What's black and white and red all over? Asked Hiccup. Hick, Toothless didn't know. A sunburned ping penguin replied Hiccup. It was a very, very old joke, but apparently hadn't made it to Wild Dragon Cliff. Toothless thought it was hysterically funny. He flew off to catch more fish so he could hear more jokes. It was an enjoyable afternoon. The rain stopped and the sun shone. Toothless didn't do too badly. At all with hunting, he dropped a few fish at one point and wandered off entirely to chase rabbits on clifftops. And he came back when Hiccup called eventually. By the end of a couple of hours, he had caught six medium-sized mackerel and a dogfish. All in all, Hiccup was pretty satisfied. After all, he said to Fishlegs, it's not like I'm expecting to win the most promising dragon or anything. I just need to show Toothless is basically under my control and for him to catch a few fish will make our make fools of ourselves compared to Snoutlout and his beastly hunting legend, but at least we'll have past initiation. What was more, Toothless dropped the last mackerel on a heap in front of hip, Hiccup. Fishlegs noticed something sharp gleaming out of the dragon's lower jaw. Toothless has gotten his first tooth, said Fishlet. That seemed like a good omen. As they staggered back past old Winkley, who was sitting on the rock watching them for the past couple of hours. Very impressive, wheezed old Winkley as he showed the boy the fish wrapped in Hiccup's cloak. I reckon Hiccup might actually pass the final initiation test on Thor's Thursday, said Fishleg excitedly. You're still worrying about that piddly little test, are you, Hiccup, said old Winkley. There are larger concerns, you know. There is a ginormous storm brewing up, for instance, and it should hit us in about three days. Piddly little test, Fishleg said indignantly, indignantly. What do you mean, piddly little test? The Thor's Thursday Festival is the biggest event of the year. Everybody who is anybody will be there. All the hairy hooligans and 
them their meatheads. Plus, this may not be important to you, but anybody who fails the piddly little test gets put into exile to get eaten up by cannibals or something equally gruesome. I'm going... Going to call myself Hiccup the Useful and his dragon Toothful, said Hiccup, beaming. He thought of just now. I re am really pleased with it. It's a solid, dependable, and not too flashy, and it's not too much to live up to. This reptile finally got his act together and caught some fish, said Fishlegs, pointing at Toothless, who was pe peeking his nose with one claw. Incredible as it may seem, Hiccup may pass the test after all. Oh, I think it's on almost certainty, said O. Wiggly looking at Toothless, who is now attempting to cross his eyes and falling down in the process. Almost repeated old Wiggly thoughtfully. The boys went home with Toothless falling behind them whining. Oh, carry me, carry me. That's not fair. My wings ache. And that's where we will stop. We will begin on Thor's Thursday next Monday when we get back together. So, give me just a second, and I will turn off presenting. There we go. And I will turn off the recording.